This is uh, some background preparation to tutorial three and also an introduction to how we start to transform data into a form where we can actually start to use it for analysis. Uh, you'll also be using your do files a lot today. So the first thing I want you to do is to get into Stata. And what I want you to do is to get a do file up right away. So don't even open up a data set yet, just get a do file going. Uh, so you can do that by file, new, do file, or you can also do it just by clicking on the do file editor. And here I've got this particular do file here. Okay, so the first thing, I want you to start to get used to using the do file here instead of your command window. You can do everything in the command window, but um, this gives you a better record of the work that you've done. And it also is an instance where you can save that work and then simply like reuse it. So if you do a do file correctly once, then you don't have to duplicate your work. And so this is why we like having the do file ready to go. Uh, here, I want to also show you a couple of tricks. Anytime you do a leading asterisk like this, in a do file, it means that you can just type yourself notes and the computer won't run it. So if there's any kind of asterisk in front of a line in your do file, it just is like a note for yourself, it's super useful as a note for yourself. Or if you know if you made a mistake or you don't want to run a particular line uh, or a particular command again in your do file, you just put those stars there. So I like it for titles, for keeping my do files neat, for showing all of the work that I'm doing. So this is tutorial number three. Oops, these three. And this is recoding and missing data. Okay, so what is recoding? Uh, recoding is basically when we start to transform raw data, so i.e. the variables that are already in the data set, um, into a form that's more useful for analysis. Okay, so basically what we're doing is we're taking the raw data and we're actually putting it in a form that we can use for any kind of analysis that we need to do. So why do we need to do this? A few reasons. Uh, the first is we need to deal with missing data. So missing data are... Um, Missing data are answers to questions or data that don't tell us something substantive about a variable. I mean, this is one way to think about it. Um, missing data are often equal people who say they don't know how to answer a question or they refuse to answer the question, or they would prefer not to say for any particular question. So you can imagine anybody who's saying, I don't know, or they say, I'm not going to answer that question, or I would really rather not say my answer to that question. Sometimes we will want to analyze this. Sometimes this actually does tell us exactly what we need to know about a question. And sometimes we will be using it in a particular kind of way, but often, uh, we don't want these people included because we really just want the people who knew what they wanted to say for a particular question and they actually gave us a valid answer. And by valid answer, I mean they gave us like a substantive answer to the question. And so part of this is that you're going to want to deal with missing data um, and you need to deal with missing data. Otherwise, it ruins your statistics and it like it just increases noise and the computer will treat it as like a genuine substantive response and we need to tell the computer not to do that. And we do that by marking it as missing. Okay, the second reason is that we need to um, transform raw data into uh, new variables that are easier, better, clearer for us to use for analysis. This should become pretty clear as we start working with some of the data that we've got. Uh, 
often what ends up happening, like if you think back to that income number variable that we used in tutorial two, like it's just so big that we can't do anything meaningful with it. We actually have to work to put it into a more useful form, particularly for the kinds of analyses that you'll be doing. And so just know we've got to, this is all about cleaning the data or setting it up in such a way that it actually is ready for us to use with statistics. We need to talk about levels of measurement and recoding. So for nominal data, where we just have categories, um, you can exclude any category if you have a good reason for it. The reason why we can do this is that there's no hierarchy. There's no order to nominal data. They're just categories. So if you think about this, it's kind of like any yes, no question. You're going to want to keep the yes and the no in because you need to vary across those two categories. But if you think about something like vote choice, like which party did you vote for? That's a variable where you'll have options like um, here. I'll show you here. Look for, oh, no, I don't even have the data set open. Um, so I won't. Well, let's see if I can open. Nope. File. Open recent. There's the Canadian election study. So here I do look for vote. Which party did you vote for? Okay. So I'm going to break that and just do tab CPS. This is, I'm just looking at a particular vote choice variable. Oops. Nope, that's not what I wanted to do. Because I spelt choice wrong. There we are. So here you can see I've got liberals, conservatives, NDP block, green, people's party, another party, and don't know, prefer not to answer. You can imagine if I'm looking, if I actually just want to look at vote choice in, say, British Columbia, where we have often tight three-way races between the liberals, the conservatives, and the Democrats, I'm going to want those parties. I probably want the Greens. I can't have the Bloc because the Bloc doesn't field candidates in BC. I probably don't want the People's Party. If I'm looking at this, um, regardless of what you think about the People's Party, uh, I did not as a daughter of an immigrant, really had a lot of problems with, uh, like, substantive moral problems with a lot of the policies espoused here. Um, but leaving that aside, 2% uh, of reported people in a data set uh, is too small for me to actually do anything meaningful with. So I would just kick them out of the analysis, and I can because it's nominal data. I can exclude any good category if I've got a good reason for it, and I would say this is too few cases for me to substantially analyze. I'm going to run into problems. I've got like 9,000 people who voted for the Liberals. I have almost 9,000 people who voted for the Conservatives. This 605, too little. I'm going to chuck them out. Same thing with another party. I don't know who this is, and it's even smaller yet, so these ones I would check out here. So if I was dealing with like this particular variable, I would, and depending on the context, I would either want to include or exclude the block. If I'm looking exclusively at Quebec, I would need to keep the block in. If I'm deliberately excluding Quebec, I would need to keep the block out, things along those lines. Um, but I can come up with a reason for it, and I can just drop categories like that if I'm dealing with a nominal variable. But for ordinal and higher, so this is ordinal, interval, and ratio data, you absolutely may not exclude categories. You need to preserve the existing order in the variable that you've got. So you can't do, like, so with the nominal data, I could just pluck the block out or I could pluck the people's party out and just exclude them from the analysis. I absolutely cannot do this. I absolutely cannot do this with ordinal data. So instead, we collapse adjacent categories. Um, and so what you can do is you can collapse categories together 
Uh, and usually what this means is that if we've got interval or ratio data, this means that we, like in transforming them for something that we need for a data project, we end up dropping them down to ordinal level. Uh, but the point is that you can't, you can only exclude any kind of category that you want um, with nominal data. Uh, and then only if you've got a good reason for it. But for higher levels of measurement, you have to keep all of that information in. Like you can't just plug categories out that you don't want to work with. You have to work with all of them. You're stuck with it. Again, the only exception is missing data. You always need to do something with missing data, often just exclude it. But for the other ones, especially this, you need to think about how you're going to be collapsing your variables together. Okay, so with that background, um, I am going to lead you through the very first recode that you uh, will do in the context of this class. And so what I want to do is I want to show you how to transform the education variable in from its raw form into a variable that you can actually use. And so if I were a student at this point, what I would do is I would open up Stata. So if you don't have Stata open up, I mean, you already have Stata open up already, but I would start my log file. So I'd begin my log in tutorial three. Here we are. So I'll be Thomas Polly 389 tutorial number three, save. I'm also going to save my do file with the same format. Thomas Polly 399 tutorial number three. Perfect. And if I were a student, I would then open up the Canadian election study. So I would open, you can, you've already opened up the Canadian election study, a short version for tutorial two. For this particular, uh, I want you working with the full Canadian election study. So you get that from content. Then if you go all the way down to data sets, here's the um, a data file here. So we're using the online survey and they've only released the first version of it. So this is where you would get the data set. You would download it from D2L. And then once you had it downloaded, you would open it up into, uh, it's like, uh, into Stata. And so what I want you to do is I want you to copy that file path name. Or what I want you to do is to actually like save it in a useful spot. So if you're using in the, if you're using the lab, you're going to want to save it to your OneDrive or somewhere where you know, no matter which remote computer you're accessing, you'll be able to get access to it. If you're using your own computer, I want you to save it somewhere for Poly 399. Um, I have a whole like separate file for the Canadian election study on my computer, so that's where I've got it saved. But what I want you to do is to um, copy that pathway so that you can start putting it in your data set here. So you just make that pathway there and then you do comma clear. The reason why you do this in your data set is that you can then select this and run it and it, the do file actually literally opens up the data set for you. So you can see the benefit of this. If you've got a do file that has the data set that you need ready to go, you don't have to go and like hunt it down. You just tell your do file to like run the particular data set. Okay. So a couple of things. Uh, here I want to look for education. Now, if you, there's a keyboard shortcut to make these um, uh, commands run in I think on a PC, it's control D, but somebody who's a PC user would need to verify that for me. For Apple users, it's shift open Apple D. And then it like runs the whole thing. So use keyboard shortcut. I think it's control D on PCs and Shift, open Apple, that little like command button thing, plus D on Max. Okay, so use the keyboard shortcut. You can then get back here, and I'll just click more to because it tells me it needs to get to the end of the do file. So here I've got CPS 19 education, and the very label is what's the highest level of education you've completed. Then I've got like stuff about 
policy positions about education. And then you'll notice I've got a bunch of weight variables. We'll come to these right bef like later. I want you to get used to working with variables before we start talking about weights. We need to talk about sampling before we talk about weights. Um, what I want you to work with is a CPS 19 education. You saw this last week in the tutorial. This is the variable I want you to use. So in the do file, I want to do tab CPS 19 education. You can also copy and paste it so that it's there. If you copy and paste, it's there. Okay. So again, I'm selecting this. I'm going to run it. Here I've got the education variable. You'll notice it's got a number of substantive labels. So it goes straight from no schooling to professional degree or doctorate. And then I've got a, I don't know, prefer not to answer. So I know this category here is my missing data. These people who don't know what their level of education is uh, or don't want to tell me, I want to exclude them from the variable. But I also have 11 categories here. So I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. I've got eleven categories for all the analysis that you'll be doing for the purposes of Poly 399. This is too big. Like you really need like no more than three categories in a variable for the kinds of stats that we'll be running. So we need to figure out how to um, put this into a more usable format. Now, if some of you are thinking, well, I can exclude the no schooling or the some elementary school, because look at how so few people are in this. Um, I can just chuck them out, right? The answer is no. The answer is no. You cannot exclude a category. Why? Because education is ordinal. So we have to include all of this information, all of these 11 categories, uh, not the missing ones, but like all of these substantive categories here, we have to get them into like a more usable variable somehow. So what we need to do is we need to create a new variable and then recode it into a useful format. How do we go about doing this? So I want to see, I need to know the numerals that are associated with every single one of these because these are just labels that are on this. What I need to do is to see what CPS education is without the labels on. So I'm just going to run that quick a minute and I can see it just goes from rule one through 12. So now I know one stands for no schooling, 12 stands for my missing data. And then I've got this kind of match between these substantive labels and uh, the numbers that they actually stand for. So what I want to do is to generate a new variable but I'm going to do gen, that's the short version. So I'm going to generate my new variable education. And I'm going to say it equals CPS 19 education. Why do I do this? Always, always, always make a new variable to recode. Preserve the original raw data, always. You always, 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 always make a new variable when you're going to be doing a recode. You always preserve the original variable in its original format. You never, never change this. The reason why is that you will inevitably make a mistake. Always. You, like the mistakes are common. You have a typo or you like don't do something quite right. And then you need to go back and do it again. And so if you're transforming the original data, um, you can't go back. You have to go and like not save the data set. You have to open up the whole data set again. Whereas if you're just making a new variable here and you make a mistake with this, you can just chuck it out and start over again. But you can only do that because the raw data, this original variable is pristine. It's preserved. It's always in this format here. You don't change this. You always make something new to change. You always make something new to recode. So here I'm going to do gen education. And then it's this. I'm just going to say make my education variable the same as that one. That's all it's doing. And so if I tab education, I've got the same. I've got, it's like I've got the education variable but with no labels on it. Right? So, because I didn't put value labels on it. So here's my education variable. What am I going to do with it? I want to make three categories. I want to make people with high school 
diplomas or less. I want to, I'll just do high school diploma or less. I want some post-secondary, but no university degree. And then I want university degree or higher. So what are those categories? If I look here, knowing that this is one through 12, so high school diploma or less is one, two, three, four, five. Completed secondary high school. This is my cutoff point for my first category. So that's high school and less. Then if I'm looking at like post-secondary but no university degree, it's these three. So I've got some technical community college. This is Cégep uh, in Quebec, which is like this bridge between high school and post-secondary. This is completed technical community college, Cégep, and this would be people who have done some university categories. So this is six, seven, and eight. And then I've got the bachelor's degree, the master's degree, and the professional degree or doctorate. Professional degree is like law and medicine, stuff like that. So this is nine, 10, and 11. And then I know I've got my 12s that I need to kick out. So here's how I would go about um, making this into a new variable. So I'm going to recode education. I want those first five categories to be collapsed into one. So I do one through five, that forward slash is through, that is one. I make a space, six through eight is two, and then nine through 11 equals three. If I just did that, it tells me I've got a bunch of changes made, and then if I did tab education, it sees I've got the one, two, three, and 12. And remember, these are my 99 people who said that they didn't know what their level of education was. They prefer not to answer. So I have to deal with those 12s. So again, I do recode education, oopsies, 12 equals missing. For Stata, missing is period. So I just say, make the 12s a period, which means that, oops, and I spelt it wrong, education. There we are. 99 changes made. If I tab it again, there I've just got one, two, three. So to finish this, I do label define education. One is high school or less. Two is some PSC. Three is university, which I spelled wrong, degree or higher. Then label values, education, education, tab, education. And actually I'm going to do tab one CPS 19 underscore education, education. All right, so label define, poof. So why am I running that original variable together with this one here? So you can see this is a, this will go beautifully into a table. I know substantively what each counts as. I see this distribution. I can see the plurality category. The biggest category here is people with some post-secondary followed closely by university degrees and the outliers are folks that only have high school diplomas or less. But why am I doing this? I want to make sure that my numbers match the raw data and the original one. So I know I've only taken 99 people out um, of the sample here because these are people who didn't give me a substantive response. So I've got the 99 people who preferred not to answer. Uh, you'll notice the difference between, if you subtract, uh, I did this on my phone, but if you subtract like 37,822, or if you take 37,723 from that, the difference is 99. One of the other things that you always want to do too is to check to make sure that the number, so in this case, my total number of cases, this 5,000 plus 1,600 and all of these matches this amount here. You always want to make sure that you found a place for every observation, that you didn't accidentally leave people out of the um, of your recode. But uh, anyway, the point is that here we look good. We know that the only difference that we've got in these numbers is that 99, which is what we wanted. And this is neat and clean and elegant. Now, there's another way that you can do this. And so I don't like doing it this way, but I'm still going to show you where if you were going to recode, say, that original 
variable. You can just do, this is a code that you can make where it's recode CPS 19 education. And I'll just do the same thing where it's my one through five equals one, six through eight equals two, nine through 11 equals 13, 12 equals missing. And then this is really important, comma, gen. And then I have to have a new variable name. I'm just gonna call this education two. And then it'll be tab education two. So you can do it that way. There's two things I don't like about doing it this way though. First is, uh, instead of my um, like variable name there, tab of education, I have recode of, and then I have this whole like mess here. So personally, when it comes to making an elegant table, I don't like that so much. Um, what's worse though, and I think the part that I really dislike about doing this particular way of recoding, especially while you're learning, is that you're changing the raw data. And the last thing that you do is you tell the computer to make it into a new variable. If you forget this part of your syntax, it means that you've done the thing that you shouldn't have done and you've recoded your original raw data into a form and you can't get it back once you've recoded it. You have to like open up a fresh, clean data set that you haven't transformed uh, in order to fix it. And so this is why it's more steps, but my preference would be to like do this a different way. Hold on one second. I think that's my grocery. It's not my grocery order. It's California. Oh, those spam calls are so annoying. Sorry about that, folks. Okay. So all this to say, like, this was like the way of looking at this for teaching. But if I were to type this out in a way to like, just make it look neat and clean, neat, clean, Dr. Thomas recommended version, this is what it would be. So I would tab education, I would tab education, no label, I would keep this just like that. Uh, I would recode education just like that, but I would make sure I had the 12 equal missing. I would have my label define. So when I recode data sets, I see like, like chunk after chunk after chunk of things like this, where I'll just give make a note, see it's education, there's the raw variable, I know I needed to tap it again to make sure that I saw what the categories were without a label. I made a new variable, I recoded that new variable into the format that I wanted, I gave it value labels, and then when I tab, I always check, this is the last step, where I wanna check to make sure that the recode took the shape that I needed it to take. Okay, um, I'll come back with other videos to show what it looks like with the other examples that you need um, to complete the rest of the tutorial.